Hello and welcome everybody to the Academy Gaming Weekly number 14. I'm your host Storm as always and tonight I am joined by Hurix from Digital Pro Sports. How are you doing tonight Hurix? Pretty good, how about yourself? Uh, pretty good, especially knowing the fact that we have 12 teams signed up. The maximum amount that we're allowing for this tournament, 12. Three of them being free agent teams. We had an excellent turnout tonight. We actually had to turn down teams tonight to not actually participate because of the amount of resources that we have available to us. But a great turnout nonetheless. Hopefully we'll see these people back next week as, and, and more people as the scene is definitely growing around low to mid-tier players. So this is an excellent turnout. Before we get started with tonight's first matchup, which will actually be Ethereal Guardians against Chinese Takeout, we're going to have a few announcements to make. I do want to say, as I did last week, on April 18th, we have the South American Tournament hosted on this channel. That'll be a thousand gold prize pool for the players. And we'll be giving away three gem codes that night, so definitely tune in on this stream on April 18th. Um, I do want to say tonight we have three giveaways. We have two from the gem store, which will be self-hairstyle kits, and we have one gem code giveaway, which will be 800 gems. That is, uh, That will be the final giveaway for tonight, so definitely stick around for that. Anyhow, let's go, go ahead and take a look at the teams that we have playing in our first round matchup, which will yeah, be... Ethereal Guardians is the uh, red team here. And yes, it looks like so. the, uh, yep. I'll go ahead and take those builds away for us for the red team. All right, first up, we got uh, Rainy Guardian here. It looks like he's going to be running a DPS build. He's going to be running Medis here. He's got Rune of the Traveler and Berserker Amulet. He's, uh, he's got Hammer Up. He's got Scepter Focus. So this is pretty standard, something that we've seen uh, Tage kind of make popular in EU. Uh, he's going to be running 01616. So still has some good DPS, but still has a, a little bit of that Virtue support to help his team out, uh, give him that stab and... Give him that support. Moving right along to uh, Dreadslayer here, he's going to be running this 60206 build uh, that a lot of DP uh, thieves have actually been picking up recently. He's running with Runes of the Pack and Berserker Amulet there. He's going to be running, like I said, with Panic Strike. Um, something to note though, he is running Signet of Agility right now rather than the Stun Break. Uh, so make sure that we watch for that later on. Yeah, I do want to Next point up. out. I do want to point out that signet of agility. Uh, that's something we really don't see, especially as of late. We've seen a lot of thieves taking blinding powder, especially with this DP build. So we'll have to see how this works out for him. Not something we see uh, all the time, but uh, nonetheless, an interesting trait for him to take. Yeah, I, I definitely see him. I, I've seen him around in a couple of uh, unranked, and I've seen him kind of use that as a as a means to just get a little bit of extra dodge rolls out. Um, so that, I, I have to imagine that's going to be what he uses that for. But uh, next up, we have Ron Burgundy. He's going to be on his NG. He's going to be running uh, a pistol sh uh, pistol shield build, actually. It's going to be Condi based It's going to be Rune of Balthazar as well as Rabbit Amulet. He's going to be running the trait setup of 60062. So something that uh, we used to see a lot of, and uh, I, I've seen a couple of players kind of trying to bring it back, and very Condi based He's going to be running Bomb Kit with that. So uh, this is going to be... Uh, double kit here with Elixir S. Um, so look for the Condis to kind of pop out in those team fights there. Next up, we've got Regner Sigbjorn. I, I've <laughs> Ray, Rainer Sigbjorn. Is that is, <laughs> Ragnar? Good we'll enough. Call him Ragnar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll <laughs> we'll go with that. We'll go with that. He's going to be running the uh, typical shout bow build. It looks like here he's got the triple shout and he's got celestial amulet as well as Rainer the Soldier. He's going to be running Sword Warhorn with the longbow there. It looks like uh, the trade setup is going to be pretty standard as well, running 00464. Um, he did opt to take Destruction of the Empowered over the uh, Sprint. I see some warriors kind of pick and choose between that. So it looks like he's going to try to get a little bit more damage based on the boon. So look to see him in a lot of the team fights. Uh, last but not least here, we got Valborg Deshroud. He's going to be running well build, actually, with Lich. So he'd look, look for a lot of damage coming from this guy here. He's going to be running uh, Axe Warhorn as well as Staff. He's got Ogre Runes and Berserker Amulet with a trait setup of 62006. Pretty standard build there for well Mancers. Yeah, definitely look out for this. Uh, I mean, Ethereal Guardians, I've seen them in some team queues. And these, I mean, these guys, they've got a lot of damage with that, uh, that Zerk. <laughs> With that Power Necro, DPS Guardian, and a Thief, I, I think they're going to put out loads of damage here. I'd be interested to see if they're going to be able to coordinate it pretty well, because that is going to be the key to taking out a lot of these blue team members. But let's go ahead and get started with these, with the blue team finally. Chinese Takeout will be running a DD Guardian, uh, Deep Fried Lily here. Nothing too special about his build. I do want to point out he is running Geomancy Sigil instead of Energy um, or battle that we would normally see on a DD alien. His traits are obviously going to be the 00266. It's nothing special whatsoever about his build compared to other DD elementalists that we see. Next up, we've got Tyle Lane. He's going to be playing Sword Dagger. 
for this team. He'll be running with Runes of the Ogre and Berserker Amulet. And his traits are going to be 26006, which is, is interesting to see. Uh, excuse me, he has Dagger Pistol. I, uh, for some reason, thought he was Sword Dagger. Which, but nonetheless, it is still interesting to see that he's running, uh, not running Panic Strike because 26006, that's the old Thief build. Uh, most DP Thieves run Panic Strike now, and it's odd not to see Panic Strike being ran, um, especially with the lockdown potential it has for something like you know, getting somebody else on top of him to add to your DPS. But we're going to have to see how this uh, works out for him. It's uh, definitely not an unviable build. It'll work by all means, but it's just not something we're used to seeing right now in the meta. Next up, we got the Warrior Android 60 here. He's going to be running Shalpo uh, with Sword Shield, actually, instead of the Sword Warhorn. That's really going to take a lot of his Condi removal away from himself and prevent himself from getting a lot of dodge rolls with that Vigor uptime. Uh, with the Warhorn, you have 13 out of 16 seconds uptime on your Vigor, so it'll be interesting to see how this uh, the shield's going to actually work out for him. Nonetheless, his traits are going to be 00462. I believe he is actually missing two traits. If we want to go ahead and point that out to him, hopefully he's not going to run without two traits here. We're going to have to see if he ends up changing that. Uh, Mr. Lockhart, who is also playing elementalist for this team. He'll be running Scepter Focus, so he's going to be putting out a lot of damage for this blue team. He's going to be running Runes of the Pack and Berserker Amulet, and his traits are going to be 06026. So, fresh air obviously, but a little bit different because we see most fresh air at least playing 06044. Uh, that extra four in water magic is going to help a lot with the Condi removal from himself and, you know, getting some you know, regeneration with cantrips. Uh, he's, he is running two cantrips, so we're going to have to see if this pays off for him. Not having that condo removal and taking the extra two in Arcana, it's going to give him evasive Arcana. Very strong nonetheless, but we do usually see four in water magic for fresh air build. And finally, we do have Liz playing Engineer for this team. He's going to be running Pistol Shield as well with Runes of the Balthazar and Rabbit Amulet. And his traits are going to be 60062. He's running Bomb Kit as well, so he does have Double Kit, but he's running Slick Shoes. Oh, uh, Ron Burgundy over there was running Elixir S, so he's got a little bit more lockdown for his team. He's going to be able to put out a lot of damage when he lands his Slick Shoes, um, obviously, and help out uh, with the Fresh Air LE being able to land a lot of his bursts in the Fire Tournament. So let's go ahead and get these teams ready up. Do you have any predictions for these teams, and uh, what do you th who do you think's got the better composition here and might take this first game? Uh, first off, I think we actually have a DC uh, on the side of takeout. But uh, looking directly at the comp, um, I would I, 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 honestly, I think I would have to say that I'm going to put it in favor of uh, EG. I've seen them around a little bit more in the unranked queues. Uh, T is someone on, on takeout there who has been streaming a lot recently. Uh, she just picked up Thief. Um, I don't know how well she knows the rotations yet. I don't know how well she knows how, uh, how to move as a Thief effectively. So um, it'll be interesting to see. I think a lot of the people on takeout are kind of getting into the scene, um, just like everybody else is. But I think EG has a little bit more of a standing here. And based on the composition, if Valbor can get into those team fights and lay those wells down and pop into Lich form, you know, it, it's going to be over before it even started, you know? Yeah, definitely. So I think this red team has a little bit of the edge in terms of composition. You know, it's going to be very difficult for the blue team takeout here to be able to deal with a thief. Power Necro and a DPS Guardian. That all in you know all in one package right there. If they're able to land a couple of you know Mobs and get the wells down in a nice Lich in a team fight, they're gonna absolutely wipe Takeout from the floor here. Uh, they won't be taking out any Chinese food tonight if they are able to do that. So we'll have to see if they're able to lock down. But the blue team definitely has potential if they're able to you know avoid that Lich coming out from Valborg there. So. Take a look at the opening splits for both teams. It looks like we do have a cross coming out for the red team here. Two members of that team, the Guardian and the Thief. Have to see if they're going to lay waste to a couple points. members of the red team, or excuse me, of the blue team, or, you know, just push for the three points here. Yeah, it looks like red team has two members crossing. It looks like they got the Guardian, the DPS Guardian, and the Thief there going to, going to invade on Lily there, but then we got a 2v4 happening up at mid there. Yeah, definitely. So we got a 2v1 here at the hench point. So red team is going to get that early cap here. Uh, two cap, actually. They can actually bail on a midpoint. But we do have Valport already going into the downstate here. I mean, it was a 4v2. So given the fact that it was that, they should just bail out of this fight right now and play sides as they have them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they definitely gave up keep a little bit there. But I think it was a smart play um, at the beginning. It, it, it depends on how blue team is going to be able to react to this. Uh, it looks like it, it, there's going to be a 2v3 unfold on that point, but if they can hold it long enough to get their spawns, they might be able to turn this back into their favor. Right now they're getting a huge lead though, 
because of that two cap early. Yeah, blue team does have an advantage here at the Henge. No, we do have the DPS Guardian Reyna doing an excellent job in the 1v3 situation. Even with that crate on the ground, held it for quite some time. Blue team will manage to take back this point. Red team's got to make a push to the midpoint right now if they want to get their two cap. Uh, back after they, after they just got decapped on the hench note here, but they are you know a little out of position with one guy in respawn Their warrior just coming out of the gate This is looking pretty good for the blue team coming out of that one team fight at the home point But uh, here we have the fight unfolding up at keep here and Valborg's back in it And he's got both as well as and he still has his lich farm. He did not manage to get uh, The lich farm off in that first fight there, so it looks like he has it now He's he's kind of being sparing about it. He's just kind of dishing out the damage slowly. He's not being very aggressive It looks like uh, I would definitely like to see the Power Necro in this composition being a little bit more aggressive, laying down a little bit more damage, because otherwise T, as she is right now, laying down tons of DPS on him and uh, putting a lot of pressure down on him right now. Yeah, it definitely looks like the red team has lost that fight. It would be in their advantage to leave that and push to this Henshin over. They are in a 2v1 against this Dagger Dagger Ellie here. Deep Fried Lily doing an excellent job of holding it off. Should be able to hold there just in time for his, uh, you know, his engineer teammate here to come in and heal him. So but without that, like uh, it's not gonna be without that energy though. sigil, though, that that energy sigil is is going to take away a little bit of that uh, that sustain that you would expect. Uh, she has a little bit more damage because I believe she took geomancy over it, if I'm correct. Yeah, she did. But uh, because of that lack of energy, it's a little bit of a sustain loss, and that's what happens right there. Lily goes down, but could be a trade here. Reyna's down Ooh. as well. It, Lily Liz goes, goes into down too. He's in the here, misform thing. And it looks like oh, oh Liz. Liz that was, that was really good for yeah. Ethereal right there. Expe I, I'm a little confused though. I mean, they had their Necromancer in the mid fight at a 1v2. He didn't die, so it's not bad that he was there. But he, if he would have pushed that Henge node, that, they could have had that node five minutes ago. And it looks like yeah. they did just have Ron Burgundy. He did just die to the, uh, the Elementalist. Excuse me, the Fresh Air Ellie. Oh man, Valborg went to Lich form for some reason there, and he had no health, so he just he just lost a three minute cooldown. Is now in the down state, so. This isn't looking too good at the mine node for the red team. And, I mean, especially with them losing that hench point, too, we could see a potential three cap coming out from blue. Yeah, and it looks like uh, I'm going to be eating my words here because uh, blue team is definitely getting a commanding lead here with a two cap. They're already up 50 points here. Uh, we got a 1v1 at keep right now. Looks like uh, Lockhart's going to be pulling away from the mine point right now. So it looks like everything is going to be kind of devolving over towards mid. While uh, Dread Slayer, remember, the Thief of the Red Team is getting bled out a little bit behind the staircase. Uh, I think they're going to let him get up. Rangar tried to pull out the banner. It didn't quite resin, but he was, Dread was in the stealth there, so it didn't really, you know, it wasn't a bad banner. I'm not exactly sure if that actually got the health onto him. Otherwise, that would have been a full res. Rangar is in the downstate, though. Blue Team will probably come in and clean up this fight, especially with Liz dropping that crate there, so... Once again, not looking too great for Red. They're definitely not out of this fight, seeing as they finally reclaim their home point. But at the hand, just not looking so good either, as Reyna just goes into the downstate. Yeah, they definitely had a decent start, but I don't think that they uh, maybe kind of held that very well. You know, uh, playing those side notes, like you said, I definitely believe that that would have been the like the go-to play for them. Unfortunately, they decided to kind of move a couple of players toward keep uh, that I believe that they should have just reallocated back over to the side nodes to hold them for that respawn to happen uh, on their necromancer uh, but you know going to keep like that and losing two or three of their guys straight up now they're just kind of like cycling in you see Valborg going in by himself dying to a 1v3 if they continue doing stuff like this I definitely see takeout taking taking them out you know yeah definitely so I mean they got the decap on the midpoint there that was a good um, good decap there from Ethereal, but once again, they try to get the decap on the Henge, but Deep Fried Lily, with all that mobility from the DDLA there, is not able to actually get there. So Blue Team taking the two cap now with the over 100 point lead. Red Team really needs to win a team fight here if they want to get back into this game. Yeah, absolutely. And here we have a 125 point lead with a two cap with Takeout here, and they're really just kind of dominating all these team fights. Lily. Uh, and under a little bit of pressure here, it looks like from this uh, this two v two setup, but they're uh, gonna get Dreadslayer to kind of move off that hinge point. So it looks like it's just gonna devolve into a two v one until Dreadslayer can come back in. Yeah. Meanwhile, at the midpoint, we do have Tyler Lane in the downstate here. So Red Team could be looking at a mid cap potentially if they take out Mr. Lockhart. Mr. Lockhart is very squishy, being a sort. Uh, excuse me, being a fresh air Ellie here. But I mean, he has all of his cooldowns up but he can be taken out pretty quickly. They already get the decap here, so the red team, I think they really need to bail out a hench right now and push this midpoint. Actually, they just lost the mine point, so uh, this really, again, it's not looking really good for Ethereal at all. 
Yeah, definitely not an ideal uh, situation to be in right now. And uh, looking over at Keep, it looked like Valborg was having a hard time trying to res his teammate, wasn't able to get on the points, so they weren't actually able to get four or five of the tick points there uh, from Keep because he was moving in and out of that cap there. And now it's turning into a 3v2 situation that I don't think they have the other hand in at all. And I think they're going to be going into downstate and losing that point that they had just gotten. As soon as Valborg goes into downstate and that immune goes up, I think they're going to uh, have that go into a decap and it's going to be a 2-0 cap situation here. Yeah, Ron's still got his crate out. I'm not exactly sure why he hasn't dropped it. There it finally goes down. It might have been a little bit too late. Looks like the DPS guarding for the red team is going to be getting that mine point, which he desperately needs for his team to get back into this. But overall, they're going to need to win this team mid fight if they want to win this game. I think if they lose this mid fight, that is a good game. Chinese takeout will take this game number one. But it looks like T is in downstate there. They're, they're going to try to power res her, but Dread is really low as well. It looks like T might. Yep, T brings him back up. Lockhart is in the downstate. Red is actually getting a little bit of a uh, head start here, a little bit of a lead coming out on this uh, this key point. And they have a couple of ticks onto the cap. Uh, well, Liz goes down too. And it look, look at Deep Fried Lily's, Lily's Mr. Lockhart. Well. Lily's it's low as well. Full team Everybody's wide. below 20% in here. There's the rally that goes off again. Red just working off the rallies here. Dread is about to go uh, downstate, but he stays alive. And there, Lockhart goes in the downstate, has to vapor onto the point just to try to prevent that cap for a little bit longer. Looks like they're going to stomp him out. And uh, it looks like Red Team is going to finally get another two caps in for their favor. I, they were slow in rotations, though. They had a Lich in the midpoint. Tayo coming right off a of respawn, getting that free decap on the mine point before the Red Team even gets to midpoint. He's just going to bail. It's going to waste quite a bit of time from two of the members of the Red Team as they both ran back there. But they really need to get a decap on the hench point because if they don't, they're not going to win this game right now. Yeah, they definitely need to get something going. It looks like they're going to recap mine point, and it all comes down to this keep fight uh, for their future. And then they need to make, like you say, a, they need to make a push to that hinge point and get a decap. They don't even need to hold it. They just need to get that decap, prevent some point accumulation coming on uh, from takeout, so that they can use their two cap and get a uh, get back up to a tie scenario and take this game. Yeah, definitely. So Dread Slayer did eventually go down there. He did take out Deep Fried Lily, but the res came out from Liz. This is not good for Ethereal at all. They did get the banner there onto Dread Slayer, but even so, the points are still taken away for takeout here, and they're going to win it with just one point. Yeah, it's, it's real close. If Red can keep winning these fights, though, if they can keep basically farming kills, getting those five points per kill, uh, get, keep getting that, and then get a decap or get both bosses or a boss or something but here we have just as i say boss actually three members oh, of the blue team man. take out taking out uh chieftain yuzahan over there and it looks like yeah. he's down and he's yep there's 25 points for them they're only 50 points away it look we're gonna probably see them just kind of holding hinge point while their thief goes to decap uh onto mine it looks like they actually managed to get Svanir over on the east side of the map there with Reyna and Dread Slayer. So I, I really see this going into blue team's favor. I don't see EG being able to really pull anything out here unless they can get a real quick decap and then hold it. Uh, I don't see anything happening, but they're not moving quick enough. Their rotations, like you say, aren't, aren't coming out as quickly as they need to be. Yeah, and I just is, don't see them making it in this time. This is definitely not happening, especially with Valborg, their main damage source, sitting at the mine node in a 1v1. That is not going to do well for them. It's, you know, they need his damage right now at the hench point, so this game is definitely going in favor of takeout. Dreadslayer putting out a lot of damage here onto Mr. Lockhart, but even so, they've got three members of this blue team over on the hench point. There's no way this is going to come out anytime soon in their favor. I, I just look at their health pools right now. They already got... I mean, they're about to lose the mine point. Valborg's in the downstate, has to get plus one by the warrior for that team. But even so, blue team going to be hanging on here onto this hench point and taking game number one. Yeah, and with that kill there, it pretty much solidifies it. They're going to get the five points from that and hold hench. There's no hope for Dreadslayer to be able to 1v3 this, in my opinion. He needed that rally or he needed to keep his teammate alive. But it looks like he's going to be dropped as well. They're going to cleave him until the game score ticks up to 500. And there it is. 500 to 420. Congratulations, Takeout, taking this first round. Yeah, Takeout did an excellent job of rotating that entire game. I mean, they lost the initial mid-fight. There's just so much damage coming out from the red team. Uh, that, you know, we thought they had an early... They did have the early two cap there. They had the early lead, but they weren't able to maintain it. Just the blue like team's that. rotations blue were superior, team and board. the teamwork that they had, you know, throughout the entire game, you know, gave them that victory. Regardless, it was a really close game. Only about a 85-point win there. Um, e even so, it looked like Ethereal had total domination in the game throughout.
I'm interested to see what they're going to do on the second map here. I mean, we could definitely see that go the other way. If Ethereal is able to keep up what they did at the beginning of the game, we're just going to have to see some good rotations from them. Like I said, multiple times, they had two caps somewhere, but they stayed at the third point, and one or two members of their team died there, which ultimately led them to getting two or three capped by takeout here. So unless they're able to rotate out of those fights faster in a more an efficient way, they're going to lose the second game here. We're just going to have to see if they're going to step up to rotations because ultimately I believe that is what made the difference of winning and losing that game. Yeah, absolutely. I think the biggest uh, pivotal thing here is is riding on the Necromancer. Uh, when you have a build like that, you know, making sure that he's rotating, like you say, at the right time, the right place, and uh, getting in all of that damage burst that he has, uh, that's going to be the most important thing for EG as a team, making sure that they hit the rotations with the right players at the right time. And, you know, uh, I don't think that they were doing it effectively. I think the Necromancer kind of, uh, you know, like you said in the at the end of the last game, in a 1v1 with a Thief there when they really needed him for the team fights, he needs to be in those kind of situations, the not in the 1v1s, soon. not sitting on points. Uh, I saw EG doing that a little bit as well. So yeah. uh, we'll have to see if they make some changes to that. And if they do, I think they'll be in a pretty good spot. Yeah, I do want to point out, like you said, 1v1s. They don't need that Necro on the 1v1s. They need him in the team fights. He is a massive part of their team fight, Hold especially with all the damage points. he's able to put out. But taking a look at the opening splits, we have safe openings from both teams. Two members of each going to the home point. Three members of each team, excuse me. Three for the red, two for the blue going to the midpoint. And Mr. Lockhart's going to push for that third node. He's going to be have a rude awakening here. Despite that FGS, he might... T yep, he is going to bail out of that seeing this two members yeah. there, especially with Valborg. Excellent decision from Lockhart there to get out of that. He was not going to win that matchup. Yeah, absolutely. I would I would probably have pulled away myself. Uh, but there it is. T actually in down state already. Uh, I didn't even get to see what happens. That happened so fast. Looks like Dread Slayer was all over T there. But it looks like she got she got bannered up, and Dread Slayer is now in trouble as well. Because with her, her up and Dread Slayer, as soon as he gets out of uh, out of stealth there, uh, out of that SR, it looks like he's going to be uh, under some pressure. But it looks like Liz is dropped as well. Liz dropped the down state. The stomp is going out, and T goes down, <laughs> trying to get the rest. So, so many to, I mean, so many people are down to rally right now. On T. It looks like they're actually going to get the rally. I'm not sure about this. T is oh, so stomp, low. The, the stomp, stomp is, comes the stomp out. Is out. The stomp is out. And, and Liz is about to go down too. The Condies are too oh much. Red Slayer is putting the smoke field down there so Regner can get that stomp. And Liz is gone as well. Looks like Red Team uh, each really getting a, getting a good yeah, start they again. Yeah, we'll see if they can hold on to this. They're coordinating their damage really well. They've taken down person after person. And if they continue to do this, they're going to take this two cap here. Actually, Blue Team. Does get the decap on the quarry in the midst of all that. The warrior has to go back to get that. But I mean, blue red team does take the midpoint. Obviously, midpoint is the hardest point to actually get in decap in Guild Wars 2. So, you know, excellent team fight from the red team here. We're just going to have to see if they can get their home point back and not fall into what they did last game. You know, they had very yeah. poor rotations from point to point last game. And if they manage to do that again this game, it's not going to look too good for them. We do have Deep Fried Lily FGSing out of here. Should be okay. Red team going to be pushing hard back in the midpoint. Blue team just needs to regroup right now and take another mid fight because, you know, they could that could have went either way if, if a stomp had been interrupted or that? a res had came Red faster. We'll just have to see what Uh-oh, Dread Slayer under a lot of trouble. He's forced to SR. He has every cooldown blown right now, so if he gets back into that fight, he's going to be in some trouble. But just like that, T actually goes down, used up too many of her offensive cooldowns there. And uh, she's going to get stomped right out just like that. So T is out of the fight. Dread Slayer is still low. So we'll have to look at what he's going to be doing uh, in this fight here. It looks like he might go ahead and put some pressure down on Android. Android goes into block right there. Looks like she's going to try to pull away a little bit uh, with Reyna under a lot of pressure as well. Tons of Condies down on Reyna. Reyna is just getting trained right off point by the Elementalist there. And Reyna is going to try to go back to their home node and get some support there. And he does. And Android gets stomped out in the meantime. Yeah, that was good peeling there from the Ron Burgundy there. They both swapped out, but NG put out his heal for Reyna, so it was an excellent job of Ethereal, you know, getting good rotations. But in the meantime, the Thief, T, is going to get that decap on the quarry, so the blue team, what they need to do right now is bail out of mid. They don't even have a hold on it. They at least have the decap on this, uh, excuse me, on this quarry node, and if they're able to take the fight to that node, it's going to Oh, the help Lich Bob! Lich did come out. Just... Lich did. The Lich did come out on that uh, on that one v three there. So Valborg is going to try to get some more use out of that Lich, even though he's low health. Uh, looks like the Condi is going to push him back over to mid though. So he's going to drop that. But he did manage to get Lily down with that Lich bomb. Uh, pretty exciting to see. Although I don't 
Yeah, totally definitely. On this the Corey note, though, Lockhart and T down. Dreadslayer is trying to get the res here onto his bit of that teammate. Gets fight. him up, and red team's going to be taking back their home mode here. Yeah, uh, we saw earlier Reyna pulling back. It looks like there was a little bit of a chase that happened. Dreadslayer came over to plus one that, and uh, because of that, both T and Lockhart are out of this match for the next five or ten seconds. Yeah, definitely. So, and Red Team going to reclaim that 2-cap again. So, Red Team doing an excellent job. Let's just hope they don't overextend here. Dread Slayer's in a bad position. None of his teammates here. A lot of cooldowns coming out, especially that Slick Shoes coming out from Liz there. So, he's going to waste a 45-second cooldown. But uh, Red Team, they need to keep an eye on their home node right now. As Blue Team's coming off a respawn, we're going to have to see what T decides to do. It looks like he's not going to. Actually, Lockhart and T are going to push to this quarry node. So, Right behind red, and five members at the midpoint not even paying attention. They will be decapped, more than likely, on this quarry node. I uh, I definitely think that one of them needs to make a decision and, and move off. And there we see Lockhart moves back over to midpoint because red team just has too much control over that fight. I think that was a poor allocation of resources. But there we go, actually not bad. Uh, Dreadslayer and Reyna come over for that next 2v2. They want a rematch, the salty rematch this is. Yeah, definitely. So a lot of damage coming out from the blue team here. A little bit more than coming out from the red. Oh, T, T goes down, T. down though in the shadow refuge. I have to see if he gets that res, but obviously Lockhart can be seen right oh, now. So the other can see is he's down. Dread is down. Oh my gosh. Dread we'll is down as well. Is this is going to be the stop. stomp Does he get the stomp board stomp though? Oh. Oh, Lockhart DPSs. If he had the judge, Slayer. oh my if god! If he had Judge's intervention up, he would have gotten that. Would have turned it around. But there, they did lose too the much midpoint of a cool too. Down there. They lost a the midpoint in the process, so blue team could possibly take a three cap here as they're near. You know, they took out multiple members of the red team. I have to see what's going yeah, on with, with midpoint. With a with an Ellie, a warrior, and an NG like that running the way that they do, they were pretty much just running on top of each other, almost kind of uh, similar to what you would see like a melee train in World v World doing. They're running on top of each other, supporting one another, and uh, because of all the CC, all this heal, all the support that they have together, uh, they were able to just kind of like push that. them off the point, get the decap. And uh, although Liz is actually Liz is going to get picked right back up and turn this into a 4v3, they're going to put a di bunch of damage down on Destroud, and uh, Valborg goes down there, and it looks like there's a little bit of pressure still coming out. The stomp comes out, Valborg is out, Dreadslayer is low, Dreadslayer is dropped now too, Blue getting a commanding lead back here again. We still have that 1-1 one, one cap here, uh, and I, I believe what we're going to see here is that Blue Team's going to cap Graveyard here, and it might turn back around. Yeah, we'll have to see. Red Team did manage to take that waterfall right off the respawn. They sent their NG there, so Ron Burgundy is going to be in a 1v1 Just against the Thief. Like that. that definitely favors him. Looks like Red Team is going to bail out of the midpoint, seeing as that was a lost fight. Good decision. They're just going to push to Quarry their home node. This is the best possible situation they could be in, given the fact that they just lost that team fight. So hopefully they're going to come off a respawn and help out this node, as we do have Reyna getting super low. Liz getting kind of low as well. A lot of damage coming out from Lockhart, too. We're going to have to see who takes this 2v2 as there's a lot of Zerker classes between uh -oh. it. We're going to see another downstate war here. We're going to see who can get that stomp. And Lockhart absolutely de demolished there by Dreadslayer. It looks like he's going to get uh, cleaved out a bit while that stomp comes out. Rallies Reyna there, and uh, Red will control their home node, but they need to make a move quickly to keep here because uh, it's Lily right now versus Valborg, and Valborg is not having a good time. Uh, a lot of pressure being down. He does not have his heal up. Lich form is up, but uh, he won't need it as Dread and Regnar move in just in time for him to be able to get that. Yeah, I do want to point out Blue Team did 2v1 Ron Burgundy on the Waterfall nodes, but it is one cap in both teams' favor here. Uh, we do have Liz making a move for the quarry, but thankfully they do have Dread Slayer. He is watching out for that, so they won't get that decap. Red Team, Red team the taking board. the midpoint too, so they might rebuild a lead here if they're able, to, they're able to hold on to both their points. But again, we have the Lord in play for this map, so I wouldn't be surprised to see either team go for it once they hit 350. We're just going to have to see who's in the right positions and who has each point. Yeah, absolutely. And we're seeing a lot of uh, Reyna and Dread working together. They uh, It looks like they really enjoy those 2v2. But ju <laughs> just like that, T comes in with that uh, pretty much across the map plus one there, using uh, some of her cooldowns offensively there to drop Dread Slayer. Dread Slayer does get picked up, but it looks like he's going to be going into downstate very soon again. And there he does do get he does get into uh, downstate T as well, and downstate both thieves again. We've Ooh, seen this a lot, Is he going to get actually. the Judge's Vayner Venture? So oh, he used it! He does! It. He, he does used it, no, it, but he didn't he need it. to, necessarily. He I don't think no, T... He it was T too late. It was too late. Yes. It was too late. That was pretty sick, to be honest. Uh, I'm, I'm glad I actually saw that being played. 
and use like that. Red team going to be taking this two cap once again. But at the mid node, Ron Burgundy's really low. They did take out Android 60. Deep Fried Lily's now in a little bit of trouble seeing his three members of his team are on respawn. They need to regroup at their home point right now if they want to get red back into this game. Seeing as Red point. is starting to build a huge lead. Almost getting up to that 100 point. Only a few seconds until they get to that lead. But, you know, this is definitely not out of the reach for the blue team right now. Yeah, they're still in this for sure. Uh, I definitely see the possibility of them being able to handle this. They really need to go all in on something, make sure that they get that two cap uh, and hold it for as long as possible because this is the point of uh, pretty much no return in terms of the uh, two to one cap here with it being 400 points in favor of the red team EG. And uh, T is getting cleaved out, so they're going to be in a 4v5 situation no matter what until T comes back up. So any fight that they get in right now is going to be something that uh, is not really ever going to be in their favor. And because of that, we see right now Android under a lot of pressure. Android's going to have to pull out, but Reyna is right behind him. And uh, Android's going to go downstate trying to get his uh, healing signet out there, and he's going to be cleaved out. So as I was saying there, look, like as soon as you get into these 4v5 situations, you really have to play intelligently. You have to know where you're going to be going. And if you get into these big team fights where it's going to be 4v5, especially with Lockhart going towards the gate now, who uh, actually, he actually got downstated, but he went towards the gate. So they were pretty much in a 3v4 situation there. That's not something you're typically going to be able to hold for very long, especially not win. Yeah, we did have Lockhart on the gate for quite a while. He did manage to take it down below 50% health. In the meantime, though, blue team did get the cap on the quarry when the red team really wasn't paying attention. But the blue red team is so close. Close. Oh, T, T did have to Shadow Refuge, so the decap coming out on both side points. Blue team finally taking down that gate. That is the only way they're going to win this game, but they don't even have 350 points. So they have to get two kills that? or a cap, and they have to get that Lord. It looks like this game is definitely going to go in the favor of EG, uh, seeing as they haven't even allowed takeout to get to the 350 point mark here. And it, they don't look to be in any position whatsoever, seeing as they've won all three nodes right now. So this is an excellent... Excellent rotations this game from EG, and it looks like they're probably going to be taking this game number two. Yeah, they, they definitely are. Uh, it's going to be a 1-1 scenario here, as we just see... We actually just saw someone get cleaved out at the at the Chief, like you said. And there it is, 501 to 343. Congratulations to EG. Uh, you know, we were just talking about they had to make sure that that uh, Necromancer was uh, in the team fights. He was. We had to, they had to make sure that they were hitting the right rotations, playing the two points. And just like that, you know, they, they did all of those things, and that's where they get that, that victory. Yeah, definitely. So, that, like I said, they needed to hold on to the, the two cap. They're not a three-point playing team. Given their comp, they've got three Zerkers in it. They don't have a Mesmer for the portal. So the, the two-point play and the rotations are what's going to win the games for them. And they did an excellent job that game. A few mistakes here and there, you know, but for the most part, they were able to rotate back and keep an eye on their home point, which was ultimately what gave the blue team the win in game number one. I think they had too many decaps off a of respawn, and it was a good job. Um, from the red team on keeping an eye on that quarry node for most of the game and not giving it up as much as they did their home node on the forest. Yeah, I definitely liked seeing those uh, fights where Dread and uh, I believe it was Reyna, yeah, Dread and Reyna kept coming back over to home supporting the that node there uh, and getting into those 2v1s, 2v2s, 2v3s and uh, I, I really liked seeing them work together so I'm looking forward to seeing what they do on this map. Uh, both of them have ports available so I, I would like to see them uh, kind of using those aggressively, going back and forth, and uh, controlling the map for their team. Yeah, definitely. So if you were to make a prediction, who, who do you think is going to take this game number three? You know, this is a very different map. This is nearly pure conquest, aside from Trebuchet being in use. And even that, you know, that's a big part of conquest. We're going to have to see if they take it. But uh, given, given the fact that this is a map that most teams don't have a lot of experience with, uh, who do you think is going to take this game number three? You know, uh, if you would have asked me that prior, if you would have asked me about Kylo prior to the last game, I would have said blue team. I would have said takeout. Um, reason being is that with Lockhart, with uh, the and uh, with Lockhart and T being able to kind of move around wherever they need to be, and plus one fights and get a lot of damage out very quickly, as well as with the, uh, Lily and Android 60 being able to stand on node and control those, uh, I would have given them, given them the upper hand. But right now, with the way that EG has been playing for the past match, uh, I would I would have to say that I have to say EG has the upper hand. Yeah, I definitely uh, at least think in my so opinion. too. We'll have to take a look at what they're going to do for the opening splits here. It looks like a pretty standard opening from both teams uh both going to three at the midpoint we do have dread slayer he's going to be pushing to that 
mansion, though. We're going to have to see how that works out for him in that 1v1. But big team fight coming here at the mid -node. No trebuchet, no trebuchet play from either team. So that's kind of interesting. They're just leaving them be at the start here. So one cap for each team here. And it looks like they're all going to be crashing in at the midpoint. I do want to point out, they do have Valborg sitting at the windmill mode. That is not good. That's not what they need. Hopefully they, you know, change that in the future here. But the thing is that it is what it is right now. It's not looking good for him. Lockhart yeah, does go and... down at the midpoint, despite it being a 5v4. Reyna goes down as we well. We actually just saw, I believe, uh, I believe it was T, just came in fresh. So they're they're going to be under some pressure. Uh, and it looks like just like that, Ron Burgundy is going to be dropped soon. But the heal, so much heal coming out from members of Ethereal Guardians here. And uh, they're able to support their, so, themselves. And T, because of that, gets dropped in the downstate. Can't handle the sustain, can't handle the pressure there. Uh, T is out. Android 60 looks to be next, but Ron Burgundy is under a little bit of trouble. But just so much healing is coming out, so much support. It's it's kind of uh, similar to watching the health bars of uh, T-Well 1 Apex, if you, if you remember that. Yeah, Even now, so. watching Abjur, the, those team fights where you know the support is just always there. The support's coming out. You don't want to get into big team fights with that comp, um, that sort of thing. Like, so it's really interesting to see that uh, coming out again in this tournament. Yeah, definitely. So, blue team, knowing that they lost in mid node, it looks like they're going to be bailing out of it. We do have Lockhart going down here at the windmill node. Uh, red team actually didn't take the mid node here. Actually, they did. It's just a graphical error on the screen. So, red team with the two cap here, they are ticking two at a time, which is oddly enough, it looks like they're multiple ticks away from capping the node. So, red team. Doing an excellent job. They're going to plus one this mid fight again. They need to stick to these two points right here and forget about the third one. They're not a three point playing team. And they need to move their Necromancer into the team fights and put their NG or Warrior at the home node to watch instead of the Necro. You know, the Necro's got poor mobility. He's not going to be a great asset at the home point. You need him at the midpoint, especially with him being a Zerg class. So hopefully they make that adjustment. They haven't yet. Regardless of them not making the adjustment, they're winning this game. They've got a two cap right now, but it's definitely not out of proportion for the blue team. Yeah, yeah. and, and we, uh, we we said this, you know, uh, with Dr uh, with Dread and Verena being able to kind of plus one, they're going to have a little bit more control uh, because of those teleports. But it looks like now Takeout is getting a little bit of uh, a lead here at this mid fight. It looks like they might actually be able to get this fight into their favor because of that use of the trebuchet there. Uh, I believe it was Lily actually managed to get on that. No, it was not Lily. It was Lockhart, actually. Lockhart on the treb, supporting the team, and because of that, they were able to get uh, Clock Tower there, and then they're going to be moving back over towards their home node to support Lily and T, and uh, take out Regnar, as well as, uh, I believe that's Ron Burgundy. Yeah, it is Ron Burgundy, uh, and Ron Burgundy's going to leave. They're going to try to get out of that, so they're going to be holding this two cap here. Uh, T's going to go into SR and probably finish the job here on Regnar, and she does indeed. Regnar is in, in downstate, so they're going to be... Uh, I, I really have to. I, we're gonna have to see Valborg coming away from this home node. That's really hurting their team. Uh, they did well with that mid fight earlier. Um, they might be okay in the future, but not having Valborg in those team fights, like you say, it, it, it's a huge detriment to their team fight because he's really just sitting there and he has so much offensive control. He has so much damage potential, uh, particularly in, in an AOV. So I, I, they, they're gonna have to cycle him in somehow. Uh, he's gonna have to get off that node and he's gonna have to get in there. Yeah, it looks like Dreadsire is gonna be on the Trev right now trying to take that down, but that's not a huge advantage for his team. Seeing as they, you know, this midpoint is in full favor of the blue team. They do manage to take down Rainuff. The blue team, this is not looking good for red. Red team is now forced out of this mid node. And you know what I don't understand? Valborg is still sitting on this windmill. Really hasn't done a whole lot aside from when somebody finally came. It's, it's going to be in the blue team's favor to not even go there. Don't mess with it because they're going to be 5v4 elsewhere the entire game. So, I, I mean, we do see the thief. Looks like T is going to be making his way over to the windmill. We'll have to see if he actually puts the burst down onto uh, Wells being Valborg dropped. There. Preemptively, there. Uh, yeah, cool. All staff marks all in the same spot, but she burst them anyways. Oh, man. oh no, not a smart play on uh, T's part there. And uh, I would have to say that Valborg is probably going to win this fight now because of uh, T walking into those staff marks. Yeah. But here at Clock Tower, we really need to take a look at that as that unfolds right now. Yeah, definitely so. And I mean, Blue Team once again has to two cap after they were decapped there eventually. Uh, this mid fight's definitely in favor of the red team, seeing as they finally take down Android 60. If he doesn't get res, they get this stop. It's going to be huge. Oh, he's just a couple oh, ticks. They do get the res. Liz. Not enough that damage coming out. Back. That yeah. shield knockback coming out from Liz really saved the day there. And because of that, they were able to get Ron Burgundy down. But the but Shadow Refuge comes well. out. Banner comes oh, out. And, and we have well. Dread play coming in. 
there for a second. We did have Dreadslayer. Yeah, actually, let's take a look. We do have the Necromancer for the red team on the Trebuchet, but it was countered by the blue team. They do have somebody there. It so was, no uh, was Reyna Guardian on the Trebuchet there, and T is putting pressure down. So T is in a 1v1 with the DPS guard as a thief, so that's pretty interesting to see. <laughs> Yeah, definitely so. And Ron Burgundy getting super low as well. They do get dread up. A banner came down. I don't know if that was from the red team. That wasn't actually from the red. That was from the blue team. Mr. Lockhart and Liz down at the midpoint. Crate coming out. Defried Lilies get pretty low. So is Android 360. They're not going to get this red onto Lockhart. Red Slayer getting pretty low as well, but he gets his heal off. So the red team, if they take this fight, they will get back into this game and have a shot at winning this map number three. Yeah, I believe they're going to get that full wipe here. T got stomped out over at the trebuchet so they still have control over this trebuchet here they still have control of it that's something to know blue team's trebuchet is out for now uh the kit is up though so they can get that back whenever they want to uh lily is getting cleaved out here and reddit is getting control of the clock tower so it'll be interesting to see where they go from here uh we actually saw in that fight valborg actually come and plus one that fight and help out his team there with his damage with his wells uh i don't know. Uh, he did not use his Lich for him, so that's still up. So we'll have to see if he uses that. He has yet to use that in this game. He's actually strolling back over to the windmill now. I, I really want to see him come away from that windmill. He really needs to be in those fights like he just yes, was he because that's what won those that clock tower fight for this team. He needs to come away and uh, let Dreadslayer or Reyna kind of come in and out of that should that be required. Yeah, the blue team seems a little bit you know, in limbo right now. Not exactly sure what they want to do. T is pretty low over here. Doesn't have a lot of cooldowns in the blue team. It's kind of, you know, not really sure what they want to do with themselves right here. They need to push into this mid node or make a push for the far node. We finally have Valbor making a push in the mid node. Looks like he was just trying to put a little damage onto the warrior for the blue team. So he's going to obviously fall back to the windmill as he has all game long. Red team going to be pushing for three points. Looks like Lily's in a bit of a bad position here. So he needs reinforcements big time. Otherwise, he's going to be taken out at the mansion node. Actually, we have Dreadslayer going to bail that, so it's going to be 1v1 here. Meanwhile, at the mid node, they did get the decap. That's a good job from the blue team, but red team back into this game, only down about 15 points with 7.5 minutes to go. Yeah, pretty close match, actually. Uh, we, we've seen kind of in the last two games, one, one team usually has a little bit more control, especially at this point in the game, and we definitely could probably have called it at this point, but this match is really close. Uh, 15 point differential here. Uh, looking at Lily versus Reyna here. Oh. Lily's actually going to bring him down pretty close to it at least. Uh, and he's actually. <laughs> Lily does finish the job on Reyna. So that node is going to be controlled. Lily's going to keep that. So everything's going to be running on this fight over here at Clock Tower because Blue is going to get Windmill. So that is Just going to be like a two cap that. in their favor. Um, so we'll have to see if they control the side nodes or if they go to move in for that three cap. Uh, we'll have to see what happens, because Valborg did get killed, but he's going to be cycling in towards yeah, the mid node. Oh, we have a Lich coming out from Valborg, uh, but Swirling Wind's coming out from Lockhart there, so oh, excellent good timing play on from that Lockhart. Swirling Wind. Good, good play. He should have put out his other abilities rather than spamming the auto attack. He really needs some help here. They almost got the decap, but he is going to go down fairly soon here. Red team really needs to make a push for another node, otherwise this is going to be game. What we thought was a comeback for the red team, especially after they won that midpoint, looks as if the blue team is going to be taking this game number three with the side notes here. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like that is going to be the case. Uh, Valborg gets the well down and actually downstates uh, Lockhart, but the rally comes out because T was there to support. Uh, and this is the kind of thing that we saw in the first game there, where red team kind of lost control of the map. They didn't really know what to do. Or, or sorry, not red team, blue team. Uh, or no, 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 I'm, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, red team they lost control of the map and they were kind of cycling in towards keep a little bit and uh, kind of coming into these 1v3s, 2v3s, that kind of thing and not really controlling, not getting a good engagement and just kind of letting blue oh. team farm kills. But uh, just like that, at as the I was saying, node, I eat my own words. At the windmill road, it looked like EG almost had it. They had two members in the downstate. Reyna got the stomp onto Lockhart, got Dreadslayer back up, but they both go down nearly instantly, so this is definitely looking like game number three is going to be moving to Chinese Takeout, and they will be going on to the round of eight. I, I definitely, uh, I would have liked to see EZ take that fight there. I definitely think they had control. I was watching it with you there, and uh, they, they got Lockhart down. They had a good amount of damage out on the other two members of Takeout. They definitely could have, uh, I think they could have taken that fight, and I, I don't really think that it would have done much, but Maybe uh, 
help the egos out a little bit. Yeah, you know? definitely. So, I mean, we had some great games right there. EG really showing us what they could do. You know, coming back in that game number two on Legacy, we don't see a lot of games go to game number three. So EG doing an excellent job of picking up the slack from game number one. A little bit unfortunate. You know, we thought they had the comeback there. They were going to be able to take that game. But obviously, uh, we did have Chinese takeout there. They they managed to come back, you know, get the feet under underneath themselves and take a two cap on the sides there. Um, good job from them coming back into that game, taking game number three and moving themselves on to another round here. I do want to say we are going to be going on a short break here and that we will be doing a giveaway when we come back. So uh, hang tight with us, guys, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Shakes are real 
All right, guys, we are back. Welcome to the Academy Gaming Weekly number 14. We have our next matchup, which will be Chinese Takeout against the Inbred, which is quite the name, I must say. We do have our first raffle of the night going on right now. Go ahead and type in exclamation point raffle into the Twitch chat to be entered into that. That will be a self-hairstyle kit we're giving away. One of two of those right now. And the final giveaway of the night, which will be after the stream ends, or after all the games have concluded, we'll be giving away a 800 gem code card. So definitely stick around for that. So go ahead and type in exclamation point raffle in the Twitch chat to be entered into that. Uh, in the meantime, we are going to go ahead and start the builds, and then we will give, find the giveaway for that raffle. So if you want to go ahead and take us away with the red team here, Hurix. Hurix, are you around? Hurix, I don't believe you. I believe you are muted. Oh, there we go. My mic was muted. My mic was muted. Okay, right. we're back. We're back. We're well, back. Take we're us back. away with the Embreds team. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> with their comp here. Yeah, first up on Embreds, we've got Rigor and Muka. He's going to be running Engineer. He's got the pretty standard uh, rifle build. Something to note, though, is that he is using Vampires and Runes, something that uh, has been popping up a little bit recently. Uh, he's going to be running with a Celestial Amulet with the traits being 60044, a pretty standard trait setup, pretty uh, standard utility setup as well. Uh, the only difference being that Vampires and Rune over the uh, old standard of Holbrack. Uh, moving right along now, we do have another Dagger Dagger Ellie. Uh, coming from Trigender Pyro here, he's going to be also running that sigil of Geomancy over the energy sigil. He's running it with Runa Holbrack, Celestial Amulet, pretty standard there with the traits being uh, standard as well. 00266, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, next we got the Thief, uh, Haif, yes? Uh, is that, is that ha Haif? We're going to call him Haif. That's going to be easy. So uh, we've got him. He's going to be on Dagger Pistol today with Shortbow. Uh, pretty standard as well. Something to note, though, is that instead of the Rage Sigil, he, or, sorry, instead of the Blood Sigil, he did uh, opt for that Rage. So he's going to have a little bit more burst coming out every 30 seconds or so uh, with that extra quickness. He's running with Runa Pack and Berserker Amulet. That's going to be a Panic Strike build there. So 60206, something we saw Dreadslayer of the last match running. However, he's going to be running it with Infiltrator Signet over Signet of Agility. So he's going to have that stun break and that mobility. Next up, we've got Soul uh, on his Warrior here, Pit Sweep's uh, Soul. He's going to be running Shout Bow build. Uh, that's going to be pretty standard as well. Running with the Celestial Amulet, these Soldier Runes, but this, he's actually got opting to take something uh, similar to what Tarsus runs here. He opted for Reckless Dodge over that last point in dip Discipline there for a little bit more damage pressure when he is evading. Uh, that trait setup is going to be 10463, uh, again running with that Triple Shout and Banner. Uh, last, we have Hatui here. He's going to be running that uh, that Necro build there. A lot of Condi pressure. He's going to be uh, running it with Rabbit Amulet and Rune of the Nightmare. And his trait setup being 64004. So he's uh, not opting to do that, uh, that that thing that we see Noscock doing a lot with the uh, the corruption and that sort of thing. He's op he's opting for a little bit more Condi pressure, a little bit more damage pressure. Uh, that added Doom Fire there. Uh, for to get a little bit more damage out from his conditions. Yeah, he is one of the only necromancer that still remains that runs Doomfire over something like uh, what Nos runs right now. And I actually believe his name is Hathaway. I've had a conversation oh, with him boy. before, and most people say Hatui, but his name is actually Hathaway. So I'm going to be referring to him as Hathaway for uh, throughout these matches here. But uh, yeah, he is running Doomfire. We're going to have to see how that works out for him. Uh, that is really old meta, over a year and a half old in terms of when people used to run Doomfire, um, from when I last recalled having seen it. So we'll have to see yeah, how that, that works out right. for him. Uh, we already I believe have it was changed last April, actually. Last yeah. April, so that makes it pretty much a year almost to the date. Yeah, definitely so. We've already seen the blue team builds here, but we're going to go over them really quick once again. We got T here who's going to be playing Dagger Pistol, Shortbow, with the... Um, with the Ogre Runes, excuse me, and Berserker Amulet. And his traits are going to be 26006. Next, we've got Liz, who will be playing Kandi Engie with the Pistol Shield, Runes of Balthazar, and Rabbit Amulet. His traits are going to be 60062. Next, we've got Android 60, who's playing Shoutbow Warrior for this team. Uh, he does have, okay, I believe last the last match we had a warrior who was running Sword Shield. But he is actually running Sword Warhorn here. His traits are going to be 10463. Lily is going to be playing the Dagger Dagger Selly Ellie for this team. Nothing special about his build. And Lockhart. Lockhart will still be playing his fresh air, build, uh, excuse me, fresh air build. Running Scepter Focus with Runes of the Pack. And his traits are going to be 06026. We're going to go ahead and finish this giveaway, guys. Take a look at who we've got for the first winner of the night. 
here is our winner. We have Sorge the Exiled. Sorge the Exiled is following. If you happen to be around, you need to PM me via Twitch. It must be via Twitch with your account name, dot one, two, three, four, to receive your prize later this evening. So definitely uh, congrats on the win and definitely PM me for your with your account name so you can go ahead and reclaim your prize. Let's go ahead and get this game started up, though. Do you have any predictions for who's going to win this first matchup? You know, uh, Blue did a great job in the last set, but uh, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm... I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, Team Burt is gonna bring to the table here, and I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it to Team Burt this time around. The Inbreds here, and uh, mostly because I know their names a little bit more. Uh, I've seen them around a little bit more. I, th I think they might have a little bit more experience uh, at what they're doing. But honestly, it could go either way. Yeah, we definitely saw a lot of great plays from Takeout in the last series, so we're going to have to see how that works out. Taking a look at the opening splits, it's like we've got two members of the red team, both in stealth, and the blue team. He's not in stealth, he's just throwing nades down there. He is going to hit Hathaway multiple times, forced, you know, I mean, he already has used two of his cooldowns, already the Corrupt Boon, not going to do a whole lot for him, seeing as he didn't actually take much health off of the Engineer, though. So, big team fight coming here at the midpoint, and both teams are going to be taking their side points. Yeah, and... Already tried Tinder under a little bit of pressure, but all, all, just putting, pretty much canceling T here. Uh, Hafe is ex already right on top of him. Bliss is going to look to try to CC the Thief there, and she actually manages to get a little bit of the res going there, but uh, feared there by Soul. So this this fight over here at the keep, uh, we're going to see T actually get up. T does manage to get up, so she's back in the fight, but Liz took a lot of pressure to do that. So uh, there's a little bit of control coming here on the side of blue team. On the on the keep note, but it looks like T is going to be lost there. So as soon as those cycles or, or those players cycle back in, if they do decide to cycle back in, they're going to have a lot more control in that fight, especially with Lockhart already very low and probably dropping it down. Say and he does. So it looks like Red Team getting a very early lead here, a lot of control in that team fight. None of them really got low at all. They definitely did a lot there. And Android 60 is probably going to get killed by Soul here uh, if if he doesn't just stalemate it. Yeah, this is great rotation from the blue team though. Deep Fried Lily dropping the FDS, seeing this is a 1v2, that's not going to work out for him. Just going to get that decap and bail out of there. Android 60 still holding the decap at the mid note. He won't end up getting, you know, staying on it much longer, forced to use his heal signet instead of actually using his warhorn to get that poison off of him. That was a little bit of a misplace there. Uh, he is going to get killed here. Red team taking their home node, but Defried Lily getting onto the point before they get the mid cap. So excellent rotations from the blue team. They could get back into this mid fight once again before it actually gets capped by the red team. And, you know, they get the two cap the early lead here. So excellent rotations from takeout right now. Yeah, but with Hathaway up top there, yeah, he, he's going to get the death shroud off and he's going to get that last hit in onto uh, Lily there. So he, they're, they're going to still control this for sure. Lily's already in vapor form. He, uh, she is going to get, or he is, she or he is going to get cleaved out there. Lockhart is next to go out of the vapor form. So uh, red team will continue to hold this, but uh, they're going to be trying to plus two, plus three over here at the mine. Everybody's going over to the mine fight, it looks like, uh, with Rigor very low already. Going to be dropped into the downstate as soon as that, yep, there it goes. Rigor He's right lost down that right there. 1v1 to Liz. It's an excellent pickup from Liz getting that kill there. They're going to have the numbers advantage throughout the map, but T does go down between the two points. That is going to hurt. He's going to be bleeding out for quite some time now, and we're going to have 4v4 throughout the rest of the map, so still Still, despite Red Team winning the first two team fights, they don't actually have a lead. You know, much more than eight points right now. So excellent rotations overall for the blue team. If they keep losing fights and keep the rotations up, it could look pretty good for them. Yeah, the big thing here is that as we see at uh, midpoint, Lockhart moving in, getting those, uh, getting that decap there. He's definitely going to maintain it with Lily slowing down the approach of Soul there. So they're going to get that decap. They still have that node themselves. Uh, like you just said, you know, they, they're decidedly winning all these fights. They're getting tons of downstates. They're getting tons of members of blue team down uh, and out and cleaved. You know, pretty much wasting their time. But the fact remains that. Blue team is just doing such a great job of, like you say, rotating, getting where they need to be, when they need to be there, and they're kind of getting out. Ro Red team is getting out rotated pretty, pretty decidedly here. Yeah, uh, I mean, and we've, we've seen two, if not three, team fights go in the favor of the red team, and they still only have a 20 point lead. I mean, we do have Fox. He looked like he was going to make a push for the Hangino, but decides not to, going to back away from it. Thief v. Thief battle going on between the midpoint and the Hangino. 
Hephaeus is going to be forced out of there. T did get reinforcements from his elementalist there, but we have Lockhart in the downstate. For the, so the red team is going to have the advantage numbers-wise around the map. It would be wise for the blue team, team not to push into the mid, though. They will be in a 5v4 situation if all members of each team are up and at that node. Have to see what the next move is actually going to be from Takeout. I mean, they're not in the greatest positions right now. They're in 4v5 throughout the map. Actually, they've got... Yes, they do have a 4v5 throughout the rest of the map here, so... They need reinforcements from their fifth before they actually make a push into the mid node and make it worthy. Yeah, and, and because of that, you know, Liz is already under a lot of pressure, but he is actually uh, hurting a little bit himself, too. He has, he's pretty much forced into stealth here. He's coming out on the midpoint. He's full melee. He's going to take T out right now, and he's going to try to... Uh, they're actually going to get T up. Ooh. A lot of res power coming from blue side there. Uh, they're able to... Every time T is, gets dropped because of that uh, early pressure there, uh, they're pretty much always able to get her up, so I have to give them hats off to that. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of downstate cleave coming out from the blue, uh, excuse me, the red team. They don't have a whole lot, to be honest. I mean, out of the way, he could put down the marks, but that's not as good as something like a power neck or a DPS guard in terms of cleave overall. But so many conditions on to Android right now. Not enough Condi clear to be able to sustain him, but Heath does go down too. A lot of damage coming out from Liz. We do have the slick shoes. Hadaway does get the stomp though. Excellent stomp coming out from Hadaway. I'm not exactly sure how he got that with the slick shoes. It must have not hit him because he doesn't have foot in the ground. He doesn't have stab himself. So interesting that he didn't get knocked down there. But meanwhile, at the mine node, we do have Fox. He does go down to the blue team. Going to be taking this small skirmish over here and be taking sides. They just need to ignore the midpoint right now and play the sides because mid has not been working for him. Big team fights like hasn't that. been working. Little blue skirmishes, you know, they won one at the mine point. I think they need to stick to that to win this game. Yeah, Red Team's kind of objective right now is definitely to kind of roam together, win those team fights, and control via the Zerg. And and they did that very well in the early game, but now Blue Team has adapted, as you say. And, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of controlling this. Lily now in a 1v1 with Hathaway. Never mind, actually, uh, Hathias actually goes and plus ones that, and they're going to take Lily right out of the match here. So Lily's going to be dropped. They're going to be manage to get the decap and the cap over onto uh, Corey as soon as Lily gets stomped out here. And uh, there it goes, so that's going to happen. But looking now over at Keep, it's going to be all about this. If Red Team can kind of pull this away, they might be able to turn this into a two-cap and gain some more lead uh, from from earlier. They, they really need to win this fight. And it looks like they're going to Lockhart's forced off point. Tons of Condi's down on him. He gets dropped into downstate. Pyra's going to try to go for uh, some cleave here to try to drop Android a little bit. Android's trying to pick him up. But the banner comes out. The banner comes out, and Sol is down. Oh, they so get the stall. They almost get to stop an interrupt they coming out got on it. the Sol. Are but they going to be able to get the res? Are they going to be able to get it? It does not he look like they're going to be able to get it. He's going to get cleaved out. He's, he's definitely going to get cleaved out. Yeah, there it is. But Lockhart's down now, too. This is an all-out brawl right now over at uh, Key Point. But the thing is, they got the decap on the henge node. So they have to put the resources to go and respawn. D5 Lily would be at the midpoint if they didn't allow that decap to happen. So look at all the down states. Five members of overall down at this midpoint. If they get one, oh man, this could be a full team wipe from the blue team. This would be horrendous for them. If they full team wipe the red team, they're going to take this game, I think. I mean, this is the solidifying point. They lost four team members there, I believe, because they let that, that decap red happen on the hedge node. They had to put Deep Fried Lily to get the full cap. He had to waste 30 seconds. You know, getting that cap and getting to the midpoint when he could have been there in 10 right off respawn with his FGS and his lightning flash to help his team win that fight. So ultimately, that was a huge turnaround for the red team getting that team fight. I think that, I mean, blue team, it's not out of their hands yet, but that was a huge pickup. And, I mean, they already have a 100-point lead just from that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh so it looks like with red team under a lot of control, actually blue team managed to just get uh, the boss there. So they're they're kind of like making sure that red team does not get too much of a lead here. Uh, it looks like they're all going to cycle into midpoint. So this is going to be uh, what will pretty much probably wind up being their last ditch effort. This fight will probably last for the remainder of the game. Uh, unless something insane happens here. Uh, so we're going to have to see how this fight turns out. There's only 100 points left on the scoreboard for Red to accumulate, but if Blue can decap this point and win this fight, they could be back into a position where they can turn this game around. Yeah, definitely so. We have a decap coming out from EBS over there on the edge. Note, it didn't look like Android was able to get on the point time. 
Uh, but we do have a decap from Deep Fried Lily. He's going to get onto the mine point. So red team will only be taking one point. But blue team definitely forced out of this midpoint. We do have Lockhart going into the down state. Liz is going to be forced off the point as well. So this game number one. No, it was super close throughout the entire game. But, I mean, we saw at the end of that team fight really gave red team the advantage overall point-wise. Allowed them to get out in front with a 120-point lead right now. Um, so that's definitely going to be game for them. Unless we see a huge turnaround coming from the blue team's team fights within the next minute here. Yeah, definitely. Er those early rotations, uh, definitely adapting to the way that red team was playing. You know, Takeout did a great job of making sure that while they knew they wouldn't win the team fights, they, they found that out very early on. They would not win the team fights. So they just kind of roamed around the edge, the edges, and just went wherever Burt was not. You know, um, and. It doesn't seem like they're doing that. Like, if you look right now, they're kind of scattered all over the place in downstate, getting bled out. Um, and I think they kind of lost what they had started there towards the beginning of the game, where they had a little bit more control over the nodes. Yeah, it's definitely. So, I mean, despite the blue team losing all the, the first two, three, if not three, team fights, they were able to keep themselves in the game with superior rotations you know the red team's rotations weren't on they weren't rotations will win a game if you're losing if you're losing the team fights i know i've been on a team in the past where we lost a lot of team fights but our rotations were so much better than enemy teams that allowed us to win so if they're able to pick that up next game and even take a team fight or two they could definitely win the game we saw them taking multiple skirmishes i think if they keep it to skirmishes rather than team fights which we've seen them losing uh, they can definitely win on Legacy. We're just going to have to see what their approach to the game is going to be. And if it's going to be different than that approach that they had this game. Yeah, I definitely have to say that uh, Red Team here will have the favor, at least in my opinion, going into Legacy here. Uh, especially with the way that they played this round. If, if Blue Team can't manage to do something crazy with the Lord, um, maybe getting a little bit more decap play with TA, uh, their thief, then I don't really know if they have too much of uh, a chance here uh, after losing that last map there. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, I, I, this is definitely not out of proportion for the blue team. They can win this game. You know, we saw some, some brief highlights you know, them winning some skirmishes, even a partial team fight for the most part. It could have went either way if they had a member of their team arrive a little bit earlier. I think if the blue team cleans up a little bit of the sloppiness and keeps the high, the rotations like they did last game, they can definitely take this game number two and force it to Kylo. Looks like we had a little bit of that spawn glitch happening uh, over on the blue side. It looks like... It looks like Trigender Pyrofox is uh, putting the hurt down on T right now, who is AFK waiting for the match to start, and actually manages to get her down. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, do you have any predictions for this next game? Who, you, I, I know you think that uh, you don't think that Takeout is going to be taking this game number three, but what, what do you think they need to improve upon to actually get to the third game here and take this round? You know, uh, they definitely have a comp that's capable of, of taking on some of these bigger team fights, especially over on Graveyard, you know, with, with the support from the Warrior, with the support from the DDLE, uh, with the support from that NG, especially with how much toughness that NG runs because she is running the shield, because she's running the Rabulum, she's able to sit in the fights a little bit more than maybe a Celieli would. Uh, I would have to say that you know they have the ability to win the team fights. T being able to kind of plus one assassinate on the edge on the edge a little bit. Lockhart being able to do the same from range. You know they have the ability to take those those fights, but they really have to come together, get their communication on point, and uh, do what we saw EG doing in their game two on this very same map just a little bit ago versus this team, uh, managing where their damage is being placed so that they can get early down states. Uh, Hadaway is actually very easy to take down. Um, you know, if you can get that flesh worm out of the way, he doesn't have any stun breakers outside of that. He's not going to be able to do anything. So if you can lock him down, he'll be easy to take out. And uh, that goes the same for for Rigor as well as well as their thief. So they they can take these team fights, but they really need to focus their communication because right now it seems like whenever they get into these team fights, uh, they're having problems getting those down states because they're not coordinating their, their damage and their CCs well enough. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I mean, if they're able to take out Hadaway there and you know eliminate him fully 
they're going to lose so much that they have in terms of Condi pressure. And CC in general, I mean, Flesh Golem, that does a lot of a lot of CC for the most part. I, I, I mean, getting the Corrupt Boon, the Spite, getting all of that completely eliminated from a team fight or even a skirmish at that is going to allow them to definitely take some fights and win a game. I think he should be the primary focus. I think Hephius, you know, he's not a bad focus being a thief, but, you know, he's so evasive with all of his, I mean, he's got... He's got Withdraw, makes him a little evasive. He's got Shadow Refuge, but he should be able to get caught and cleave. We'll be taken out by that for the most part. We're going to have to see what a, what changes they're going to make this game in order to take this game number two and move on Hold to the semifinals. But take a look at the opening splits. Pretty defensive split from both teams. we got two members of each going to their home node just to make sure no crossers, or excuse me, no three-point plays are going to happen from each. And a big team fight, 3v3 coming out at the beginning of this game. This is definitely going to set a pace for the rest of the game. A lot of damage coming out onto Soul there. Soul needs some peels. He has one shout left. Goes down before actually using that Fear Me. Lockhart coming for the stomp. Actually, T is going to go for the stomp. Flesh Golem came out trying to get that interrupt, but are they going to get this res? No, no res. there's get a the stomp, stomp actually from Lockhart. Lockhart may just get it, but Liz is under a ton of trouble too. And Liz is going to be dropped pretty soon if they can't get the support. And there it is. Uh, it looks like they're going to try to cleave Liz out. Make sure that they can't get the down, res though. because... Yes, <laughs> it does, he does. Can he get the stomp? Down. Lockhart's going for the stomp, but he oh. actually does not manage to follow up with the teleport on that stomp. You know, that's something I really like to see is the lightning flash stomp. That's uh, that's yes. something I'm hoping we see. That is a more skillful stomp. You actually have to aim it. I'm surprised Terrain didn't actually go for the stomp. I don't believe he actually had uh, steel up for that, so that's a little unfortunate. Uh, they did get Liz up, though, and he's about to go down again. So many Condies coming out from Hathaway there. Rigger is about to go down, too. He do They do get Liz up from... Healing in there, and Rigor gets stomped, so this is definitely looking really good for takeout right now, opening up this game, possibly taking a two-cap here if they're able to clean up the mid-fight. Yeah, absolutely, and they're already putting pressure now 2v1 onto that uh, that far node there. They're going to get the decap. Liz is going to put some pressure on Hadaway. Hadaway is forced to leave, so they're going to get that decap, so if... Uh, if someone can get over to Waterfall and, and make sure that Hephius does not get that full cap, and Android is moving, so they might be able to make this into like a two cap. Potentially, if Android wins this fight very soon, they might be able to get a three cap after this. Yeah, blue team, obviously the only team with the cap right now, but this is a 2v1 for Liz. Liz isn't going to last very long. Doesn't have his crate, doesn't even have his heal up for another 15 seconds. A lot of Condies, obviously super hard for him to deal with a... Necromancer has to throw out the slick shoes. He'll be going down, forced to leave this point here. But blue team is going to take back their home point. Liz is going to be down here. Red team's going to have the numbers advantage throughout the map right now. Yeah, Lily is actually coming into plus one. If they can actually take out T is very low as well, forced into SR. But if they can take out Charging of Pirate Fox here, uh, right now, very like very soon, he's he's out of pretty much out of defensive cooldowns for the most part, um, and. They, they'll be able to do something with that, but they weren't quick enough here, and because of that, the rest of Red Team is cycling in and able to put down pressure onto T to force her into downstate, and she's going to get cleaved out right now. It looks like Lily went, went up to try to support her, but because of that, Lily also went into downstate as well. So Lily's going to be vaporing onto the point, probably going to get cleaved out right next to uh, Lockhart, who actually did go down again, but the banner is going to be casted. And it does not look like it actually managed to get off. It looks like it maybe got interrupted or something. It's bannering the, now, but the he banner shouldn't again have bannered. The poison. They more oh, than likely boy. had poison on that. Obviously not going to get him up. So much cleave coming out from Red here. That was a wasted banner in my opinion. If he would have got that off right at the start when he kind of got the double res, that could have changed the pace of the game. It looked Red like team. he was going for it. I saw the animation, but uh, perhaps Hephius actually managed to get that uh, headshot off that, that pistol four and, and, and interrupt him because he was getting kind of trained by by the thief there, so maybe he did manage to get that interrupt, so great job by whoever actually managed to get that that interrupt. I, th I do think it was uh, the thief. That's pretty substantial. I mean, red team going to be taking this two cap, blue team finally getting their home point Just back like after that. there was a decap from Pyro. They're going to need to regroup right here, and you know, if they want to push three points, it's not a bad idea seeing as skirmishes seem to work for them last game, but they're all over the map right now. I mean, look at T. He's on the gate right now. They have two members of the blue red team over on Waterfall. They didn't even need one. They didn't need two of them there. Uh, blue team had the small numbers advantage at the midpoint, but Hefe is able to make it back in time. They're not even going to go for the full cap. Just get the D cap. Red team's going to be soaking in the points right now with the two cap to zero. This is a substantial turning point for the red team in taking this game.
Yeah, in my opinion, T definitely should have been over at the midpoint or over at the Cory node, helping out one of those fights because they are essentially a lot. They they lost Cory already, and they're right now in the process of losing mid. And uh, I don't believe that T is going to be able to get there and do enough damage quick enough. Uh, but as I say that, I eat my own words again. EPS under a ton of pressure. They weren't able to finish off Lily. Maybe a little bit of miscommunication there. So. Uh, Hephius actually looks like he's going to be dropping into the downstate very shortly, and he does actually go down. Are they going to be able to get the res here? It looks like they actually managed to get the banner down, so he's back up. He's going to go ahead and heal up and, and get back into this fight here. Uh, with T now dropped into downstate, looks yeah, like this, they traded there. Yeah, this banner would have been really nice if Android had it right now, but he used it earlier when it didn't count for much. That would have really helped him. His pyro is super low right now. If they would have got that res on to him, they could have taken him out instead of allowing him to lightning flash back up to that point. We do have a 1v1 in the meantime going on at the quarry point. That will take a while. Blue team, they, I mean, they got back their home point, but they are losing this mid fight, potentially losing that quarry fight. They need to do something now to get back into this game. Obviously, there's the Lord for the 150 point comeback, but if you don't get to 350, you're not going to get there. So we're going to have to see them take a fight if they want to win this game. Yeah, at the very beginning of the game, they did very well with that team fight, uh, as I believe I was saying at the beginning there, where, you know, they have the comp for it, they just need to communicate. They were communicating very well in the beginning, getting the right targets down, focusing pressure, getting the CCs out, and dropping people into the downstate, even without the help of Android, who I believe went down very early uh, in there. This is where I wish we had a replay system, but... Uh, but yeah, so they did a very good job of doing that in the beginning, but they're going to have to kind of replicate that if they want to make a comeback here. They have control of the waterfall right now. They're looking to kind of move that pressure towards the graveyard here and uh, kind of force some momentum going forward so that they can get control of at least one more node to get that 350, like you were saying, and maybe make a play for the board. Yeah, but it's not looking so good. Is They're trying to regroup on their home, though, but Liz is already down. they got to get on that point. Res him on the point, otherwise they're going to get the decap. One tick away from getting... They got the decap. That is not good whatsoever for this... Uh, excuse me, for this blue team. Especially with Android getting caught in there. He's going to go down as well. Liz gets finally gets fully dead there. And now Lockhart's in a 1v3 situation with the down teammate. And meanwhile, at the midpoint, T is down. This is, you know, this is not good for blue whatsoever. This is almost... A game you know if they don't regroup and push their home point and actually cap it we're gonna see a three cap coming out from the red team right now yeah I definitely see this happening blues kind of regrouping over here towards their uh, gate here on the on the western side looks like there's a little fight developing as they try to control that but you know it's it's kind of become too little too late uh, they had a good amount of control in the beginning definitely looked like they had some decent momentum there as they were kind of almost approaching a three cap if you remember and uh, basically just dropped it on the floor. Yeah, definitely. So they are pushing into their home point exactly what they need to do, but maybe a little too late seeing as they're already down 200 points here, being three capped. If they manage to take a team fight and, you know, wipe the red team, they could look to get a two cap get a, and a third decap, but it's very unlikely. T trying to look to where he needs to go. Looks like the red team might bail off of this waterfall node, at least a member of them, to make sure they hold on to that midpoint with T going back and forth between mid and quarry. Even with it being a 4v3 here at the waterfall node, Lily goes in the downstate. They do manage to get the res on to him, but overall, this is looking really good for red right now, and I think we're going to see them take this game in, you know, a, a very good fashion. You know, it's just a couple turning points that really sold the game for the red team, allowing them to take such a substantial lead. And it didn't even look like it was... I mean, I mean one team wipe will lose the game for you on Legacy with the snowballing that you can do with it. It's, it's a little disappointing to see this happen to them, especially after they did so well in the last game with the rotations. We weren't able to see them do the Just same like this game that. because they haven't had the opportunity to. Yeah, absolutely. And... and Right now, we can see Lily actually getting CC'd, pressured to the point where she's going to be dropping into the downstate here pretty soon. And the Connies are being laid up. So uh, she's going to be dropping pretty soon if she can't get away from that. It, it's pretty much just going to be a matter of time now with, with these 300 point score differential that we're looking at right now. It's pretty much, like I said, just a matter of time until the score ticks up high enough for this to go to 500. So it looks like the Endbreds are going to take this game to. Uh, over takeout. Yeah, definitely. So we do have the decap coming out from Pyro here. Liz not even going to attempt to, you know, do much about it. He's just going to sit there. So just we do have like game that. number three team takes a going point. to the inbreds here, and they will be moving on to the semifinals. 
Well, they will be taking on Muffin Stuffers in our next matchup. Up in the top section of the bracket, we do have Indestructible Teddy Bears, who took the tournament last week. They will they are going up against the Seraphs of Fortuna right now, so that should be a good game as well. But, um, you know, going into the semifinals here, we did see an excellent game, multiple games there from the inbred. Uh, do you have any, you know, we haven't seen the Muffin Stuffers, but I've heard they've been doing good things in this tournament, so I'm interested to see how that matchup's going to go. Any last notes about that last game you'd like to say? Yeah, uh, I, I, you know, I, at the beginning of the game, as we were saying, you know, the blue team definitely did a great job. They had the control. They knew what they were doing. They, they actually managed to win those team fights. Something that we didn't see at the end of that match and the match, the entire match before that. So it was nice to see uh, them kind of make me not look like an idiot from what I was saying before, where they, they have the comp, they have the ability, they just need to up their communication a little bit, make sure that they're focusing the right targets, and I think if they come back uh, for the next tournament, I, I definitely see this team kind of uh, making strides, you know? I, I definitely see this team being a little bit more competitive next time around. Yeah, i definitely like to see them in the future tournaments and see how they do. If they get, you know, get a little bit more practice, uh, that was obviously a, a very tough matchup for them as there was a lot of good players on that red team. We're going to have to see if they, you know, put it into practice and come back next week and uh, give it a shot and see how well they can do in that next tournament. But we are going to go on a quick break here, and we will be back with your next matchup, which will be against the team that we just saw, the Inbreds, going up against the Muffin Suffers. So stay, stay tuned, guys, and we'll be back in a bit.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Academy Gaming Weekly number 14. We do have our next matchup, which will be one of two semifinals. We have the team that we just saw, the Inbreds, kicking on the Muffin Stuffers. Uh, we're not going to wait around. We're just going to go ahead and get into these builds right away here. All the right, looking here. We do have yeah, the looking, Inbreds, looking so first if you want to go take those away for us. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, looking first here at the inbreds. Uh, we did just see them, so I'll go through them very quickly here. Uh, tr uh, Trigender Pyrofox here, he's going to be running Dagger, Dagger Elementalist again with that Geomancy Sigil. Uh, same build as before, so we'll go right on to the Engineer here. Rigor, he's going to be running the same build as before as well. He's going to be running the Rifle Engineer build with the Celestial Amulet and the Rune of Vampirism. He's going to be running 60044, pretty standard as well. Uh, if we look here at Hephios, who is 1v1ing, uh, it looks like Vale, he's actually going to be running Panic Strike again. Looks like he's going to be running that with Pack Runes, and I believe he swapped... I, I, he was the one running Rage Sigil, I believe, was he not? Yes, he was. He did swap that so for he, Blood. Yeah, he did He did swap that for Blood. Looks like he didn't get what he wanted out of that last game, and he's going to swap it back. Uh, so looking over at Soul here, Pick Sweet Soul, he's going to be running the Triple Shout banner build, the Shout Bow. He's going to be running with Celestial Amulet and Soldier Amulet, just as he did last time. And Hadaway, which I have been corrected uh, on the pronunciation of his name, is going to be running the same build as before as well. The 64004 Dumbfire build, uh, running with uh, Rapid Amulet and Rune of the Nightmare. Yeah, taking a look at the blue team here, we got Valiant. He's going to be playing the Thief of this team. He is running Dagger, Pistol, Shortbow, with Scholar Runes, and Zerker Amulet, obviously. But he is running 26006. So, like, I mean, this is the second time we've seen this tournament. Uh, this build in this tournament, like mo like I said earlier, most thieves that are running DP are playing Panic Strike. So to see something like 26006, which is not unviable by any means, is just a little bit out of the ordinary, if you will. Uh, it's not something we see played all the time now. We see a lot of Panic Strike builds coming out right now in this current meta and seeing seeing how it you know allows for so much lockdown with that MO. But uh, he's going to be running this build for this time being. We're going to have to see if he actually swaps it out later if it uh, you know, doesn't work out for him. Next, we've got a priest. He's going to be running the DPS guardian for this team. Running with great sword, sword focus. So he's not going to be running the hammer scepter focus. He's running great sword, sword focus, which doesn't allow for as much lockdown with the hammer circle and, you know, the, the knockbacks and all the good stuns that it allows for. Or not, excuse me, not stuns, but, you know, the circle and knockback that it allows for. There's a lot of lockdown with it, so we're going to have to see how this works out for him. He is running with the rune of strength with Zerker Amulet, and his traits are going to be 25610. That's new. That is something new. Usually we see 01616. But two five six one looks kind of like a PVE take on the traditional PVP build. Yeah. He's going a little bit more damage. Looks like he's trying to get a little bit more burst out of that uh, that one-handed weapon and that extra ten percent mod modifier from Radiant Power is definitely going to do a lot. I'm not so sure this is better though than the six and virtues. Like the six and virtues, especially with that stab, is so good. I mean. The main issue that we're going to have him having is that without like a generosity shield, without anything like that, his only condi clear is coming from smite condition and COP. Uh, pretty much exclusively, he doesn't have, he doesn't have the, the virtual resolve. resolve. Yeah, that's a so huge condi clear. He's going to get locked down by Hadaway. Uh, he's going to get locked down by Rigor. He's going to get locked down by uh, Trigenus. So it'll be interesting to see how he gets into these fights and 
plus ones then. And yeah, that's going to be see, interesting. See how that damage comes out. He might be in for a rude awakening with Hathaway putting out a lot of Connies on him. We'll have to see. Next, we got Dongs up. He's going to be running Selly Rifle Engineer with the Holbrook runes and the Celestial Ammon. And his traits are going to be 60044. Nothing special whatsoever about his build. Uh, basic, he's going to be running Celestial Rifle as well, but he's got Vampirism runes, uh, unlike Dong, who is running Holbrook. And his traits are going to be 60044, the same as Dong's. He's going to be running Elixir S over Slick Shoes, so I do want to point that out. That is a big change. Uh, I mean, not necessarily a big change, but is significantly different from Elixir, or excuse me, from Slick Shoes. And finally, we got Katsumi. He's going to be playing Condi Ranger for this team. He's running Sword Torch, Axe Dagger with Crate Runes and Rabbit Amulet. And his traits are going to be 20660. Uh, this is a little bit of an interesting build. Um, we don't see Condi Ranger being played very often, especially in I mean tournaments for that matter. So we're going to have to see how this works out for him, especially going against Hathaway. Hathaway is going to be able to put a lot of those Condis back onto him. So we'll have to see if this works out for him. Or, I mean, what do you expect from these teams? Do you, they can, now that we've finally seen their builds, do you have any predictions for the match overall? This is a hard one, uh, mainly because you don't know what exp to expect from blue team pretty much at all. Uh, you know, that guard build is very aggressive, uh, seeing another new build, uh, kind of, not really a new build, but something that you don't see that often uh, anymore, at least with that ranger there. Uh, so you don't really know what to expect. I definitely see that uh, Katsumi doing a lot of work for his team, so I, I see that definitely being a thing, especially with the survival t uh, traits as well. That's a lot of condition peeling for himself. I don't really see him getting pressured by Hadaway that much. So uh, uh, for this match, I'm going to go ahead and hang my hat on blue team. This time around, I'm going to do that. Uh, but we'll have to see. Yeah, I, I do like the blue team in this matchup. But given the fact that they, I mean, their DPS guardian is going to, I feel he's just going to be eliminated. I mean... Uh, if Hadaway focuses him, if he knows to focus him, I mean, they've got two engine, they've got two engineers, a Condi Ranger, and a DPS Guardian who doesn't have, who has minimal Condi clear. What more could you want as a Condi Necro? I mean, what more could you want? You get to put well, all those Condies back so. onto him if, if against the Condi Ranger. You got two engineers and you got a DPS Guardian. Like I said, without much Condi removal, this is a glorious day for H Hadaway if he decide, you know, if he figures out what's going on with their builds here. But taking a look at the opening splits for the red team, looks like they're gonna have two Hold coming out of this gate. Points. Excuse Seems me, three there. coming out of this gate, all in stealth here. They're making for a three-point push onto this blue team. Blue yeah, it looks like they're going to get a lot of pressure out on that hinge. It looks like uh, I definitely see Basic pretty much being forced to leave here as soon as he realizes that there's two other people falling. And yeah, he's forced off, so they're going to get a little bit of pressure on him. He's forced away. They're probably going to get a kill on him as well. So it looks like uh, they're going to get both side notes while uh, Sol is basically left to control that midpoint and make sure that nothing happens there uh, for the time being. But because Red Team got that early cap, because they're that... Soul was there to kind of make sure that Keep doesn't get capped early. They're going to get a very aggressive lead here, a very good head start for them, and uh, they're going to have a fight, a big fight to develop over here at Hinge. Blue team grabbed the yeah, I mean, point. excellent opening split from the red team. Caught the blue team off guard. They weren't able to get their home point. Overall, that really benefited the red team. Having this two cap getting the early lead, already a 30 point lead for him. We do have the crate coming out here onto this engine. You know, that's going to take down Pyro quite a bit. He needs help on the point. He just, he's used every attunement. He just uses water. He's going to go down. Katsumi able to put a lot of damage onto him with those Condies. Despite the odd build being used by Katsumi, actually doing quite a bit of work. They do manage to banner and get up Pyro here on this hench point. And I mean, he has a dagger dagger, Ellie, so that's going to take. Red team a while to get him down. We're going to have to see if that really pays off for him as they start to build, build their lead here during the uh, beginning stages of this game. Yeah, definitely a lot of control right now. Katsumi's put under a ton of pressure right now, and the Immobilize comes out, so they're actually probably going to be able to take him down because he's almost out of survival cooldowns, but he's going to get a lot of them back. So they're going to put a lot of pressure down on Hephius right now, who is in the down state. Katsumi is also very low and being pushed away, but he's probably going to be able to get his heal off in five seconds. I, I definitely see that being a thing. Uh, but they're going to put a little bit of pressure on him in the meantime. However, he does go into the down state. I was wrong about that, and it looks like they're going to try to go for the stomp, and the they stomp got the comes stomp. out. They did. They managed to get that, so but they're the going to try to come over. Too. 
Yeah, they're going to try to go over back to Henge, make sure that they can get on that node and control that side node for them again. Uh, in the meantime, we have a 1v1 sort of developing here with Heathius maybe in route to plus one that, and it does look like he's going to do that. So Apis is in for some trouble here if he can't, uh, and he does go down. That Zerker build gets absolutely uh, pretty much demolished there. So he's going to get cleaved out while uh, Red Team just gets total control over the map right now. Yeah, we do see a decap attempt coming out from Dong onto the mine point, but obviously Hephius is running his pursuit, so this is an excellent opening for the first three minutes here from the red team, taking that two cap, holding it for most of the time. Now they have a three cap. If the blue team don't step up here, we're going to see an absolute domination match coming out from red. It looks like Hephius actually forced it out of that point. Dong, you know, he's really favored in that matchup, but... Heavy is going to get reinforcements from Hadaway here, and he's going to turn that fight around. Uh, Blue team's making a push for the mid, though. We do have Soul in a 1v2 against Katsumi and Valiant. He's not going to last too long without reinforcements, so hopefully the red team, for their Especially sake, that burning get back there into too. this. Yes. Hopefully they or, get sorry, back the poison, the poison. Point. Yeah, so I, I definitely see uh, now that Hadaway is left there to maintain that node, he's going to get the cap of that. They're going to get a lot of damage out. However, Soul is, Soul is in some trouble here. He's in downstate. Uh, and it looks like Rigger is going to be next, so if Hephius can get over there, protect Soul, get him up, and Rigger can potentially cancel that stomp, and he does manage to cancel that stomp, so Soul is Whoa. up. Does he have the banner, though? He does not have the banner. They're going to try to get over there and res him. If they can res him, this might be a complete... Oh, no. Oh, that is oh, no. terrible that is turnaround for to see. That is not what you want to see at all. They had that fight two down states and have uh, Hephius just come in and just absolutely turn that all the way around for them completely. Uh, amazing play by Hephius, first of all, but Apis now going into the down state with that Zerker build. He's going to get cleaved or stomped. Actually, they managed. They're, they're going to go for the stomp. I definitely just would like probably that. have cleaved him out Ooh, there. Yeah, uh, yeah, no need to go for that stomp. Oh, they do leave him. I they mean, in the him. meantime, just despite like that, that huge turnaround, that was actually really good for Red because if they had lost that, they would be three capped right now because Blue Team has managed to take sides. They won both points, I believe. We did see a decap coming out from Valiant there. He bit, he had great rotation out of the midpoint to get to this mine point. He is in a 1v1 against Hadaway. Actually, it's going to be a 2v2 as we do have Dawn coming in for the blue team. And they take down Valiant here. So this is really looking good for Hephius and company. We did, are getting more reinforcements here from their engineer as well. So they're going to be taking back their midpoint. They've already got nearly a 200 point lead just under that. So this is just looking really good for Red right now. Excellent plays all around. Great rotations from them. That opening. That I... I I'm under the impression that that opening set the pace for the rest of the game right now. Absolutely, an early two cap like that, and then controlling where they go from there, kind of almost kind of like telling them where to go so that they can con control these team fights, which this team is pretty good at. You know, in the last matchup they had, they were very good at the team fight. Uh, this matchup, they've, they've been pretty solid with it as well, so they know what they need to do, and they're doing a good job of maintaining it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of pressure coming out from Hadaway onto Katsumi. He can't deal with those Condis. Uh, most of his team can't deal with the Condis. I mean, the transfers coming out from Hadaway, if they're good, I mean, it doesn't matter how many Condis he's going to destroy. There's not a whole lot of Condi removal for this team, and it really doesn't help him that their DPS guardian, Apiseed, he's, he's not running the traits that allow him to get the condor removal for his team. So that's really not going to help him out at all. I think they're going to realize the mistake this game and move on to the next game and maybe change some things up, seeing as it hasn't gone so well in terms of condi clear for their entire team. Just look at the condis on their team. Not enough condi clear. Or excuse me, that was the wrong team. Oh, over here on the blue team, look at the condis that they've got going on them. Just not enough condi removal. It's absolutely destroying them in fights. Yeah, and because of it, Dong's actually going to go down, but Hadaway is is also it's going to be another rally but Hadaway is is does manage to get up uh from that battle standard there i believe um so they're going to actually manage to get dongs out of this fight and they're probably going to force everybody else away from this if they can get basic down as soon as possible and they're probably going to and nobody else is there to support him and he goes down right there so they're going to have more control here they're going to probably cycle over towards the keep and they're going to have control over that because uh, hinge fight just happened with uh, Pyro taking out a piece in the 1v1. Katsumi's gonna try to come Ooh, in and win that. Point. Yeah, he did manage to get on point, so... Well, he didn't get on point. He didn't get on point in time, so the decap oh, wow. came out. Because the blue team had the cap on the midpoint. I mean, I mean, while the red team had four members of their team at the mine in the meantime, Katsumi got the cap on the mid... Or, excuse me, at the midpoint. And there was a 1v1 going on between Pyro and the DPS guarding at the Henge. 
Katsumi was forced to come back and help his teammate at the hench point, which allows the red team to get that two cap at the mid node. So it looked like a minor turnaround for the blue. Ended up giving the red team the two cap once again. So not much of a scare whatsoever, seeing as they were able to reinforce that midpoint, you know, claim it quite easily. No contestion whatsoever for the blue team. Yeah, I'm watching this Guardian build a little bit, um, and you know, looking at chat, you can see Sunfish saying, you know, S Sunfish uh, being the self-proclaimed god that he is, um, and I, I put an entire emphasis on uh, self-proclaimed there, uh, that he's played this build and this is what he used to run, but I'm not really seeing it doing a whole lot in this matchup here, you know, with all the Connies that are coming out, all the uh, damage pressure, I, I, it's just too much pressure, and he's not able to get as much cleave as he probably could if he had a little bit more management of his conditions. Uh, and he's going to be dropped here as I'm <laughs> pretty much as I'm speaking exactly about what was going to happen there. But Sol is also dropped, so it's going to be a rally war. And Appease is probably looking to drop first as Sol does get up there. And Appease is completely out. Red team getting control of this fight now. Katsumi is on the point with Basic and Dongs. They're just going to try to put pressure on Katsumi now. Katsumi under a lot of pressure, 30% health. Uh, <laughs> pretty much just being backed up into the corner there. And they immobilized him, so he's going to be going down pretty soon. Yeah, uh, I mean, or overall, at least force a point. They managed to get that decap on the mid node, and in the meantime, Valiant was able to get to the mine node, get that two cap for his team. Despite the two cap, the red team has had over a 200 point lead. So they were, you know, no need to worry for them whatsoever. At this midpoint, they are going to clean this up eventually here. Probably going to get the cap on their home point once they eventually rotate it, but this isn't much of a scare. They build up a great lead from the beginning of the game. And, you know, if, if they were 100 points closer, this could be a little bit of a scare. But the fact that they had it to come back 200 points, you know, it's not much to worry about for the most part for the red team. And they are going to send their thief back to the mine. He will get that free cap. They did get, blue team did manage to get the chieftain in the meantime, moving them 25 points closer. But despite that, the red team's going to be cleaning up this mid fight, getting their mine point back, and once again, taking the two cap. Red team wins a capture point. Yeah, tons of control from red team. It's, uh... It looks like my initial investment into blue team did not come out the way I expected it. Uh, you know, I, I kind of expected to see Katsumi control the conditions a little bit better, um, put out a little bit more for their team fight, uh, be able to be on those nodes with how many evasive uh, skill cooldowns he has. You know, Appease being able to plus one those and get in that burst really, really quickly with that build that he's running. It's a ton of damage potential, uh, very similar if not. Uh, more sustained pressure than a thief is able to do, especially in a burst scenario. So um, we'll have to see what they do next round. Uh, Legacy is definitely going to be a tough one for them. I definitely has, uh, think that red team has the favor for the next matchup. Uh, so we'll have to see what happens. But I definitely see red team, especially with the way they're, they're playing this game, uh, having the favor going into the next match. I mean, this game isn't over technically. Pyro is in a 1v2 at the midpoint. Appease and Basic are on top of them. That could be a little bit of a while. You know, it looks like a piece is actually going to be forced out of this fight to help that mine node. Uh oh. Probably like, oh, the decap came out. Basic gets the decap. Basic gets the decap. Uh oh. And I might have talked too soon. I may, I may have spoken too soon. <laughs> yeah, and meanwhile, at this mine point, the you know blue team's back in it. Looks like Rigger is going to be going down. Oh, he's so close from going down here. They do manage to take down Dongs. He finally gets stomped out there. Rigger's getting super low. He has his heal up. He manages to get it off just in time. Blue team back to reinforce the midpoint. Let's take a quick look at that as it looks like Basic was getting super low. Katsumi's going to come in and try and stop that before the full cap comes out back at the uh, excuse me, back He's going to have to hurry though. up. He's going to have to hurry up. He gets knocked back. This is game. It looks like uh -oh. Adaway, Adaway's uh -oh. got the full cap on mine though. So Yeah. It's and not, if he gets that, and yeah. he will. Yeah, that? That, that's, that, that does look to be game. The five points from the kill right there. They're going to cycle over to mid to protect that. Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. They don't see this. They don't see Dongs coming in. They don't see Dongs coming in. Dongs going to get oh, that no. decap, and they managed to steal Spawnier. All they oh, needed was Spawnier to win that oh, game. Boy. Or, excuse me, to win the game. And, and, you know, all in all, they kill Basic in the process. Huge steal from Basic. Dong gets the decap, and Dong Blue Team are going to win the midpoint. They've managed to take down Pyro. They need to reinforce mine immediately. They Otherwise, need to, they need to get there. Game. They need to get there. Push everything to mine. Drop your crate, dude. Drop your Dong's crate. Dong's under heavy pressure. Oh, no. Dong's didn't they drop might the get crate. The, they may get the cap. They may get the cap. Oh, they may get the cap. Valiant uh -oh. got caught up against Hefius. They do get the full cap. Oh, no. Dong didn't drop his crate. I'm a little confused why he didn't drop Blue it. That could have helped him out so much. Picking up the packet, staying alive in that fight. You know, that... If he would have dropped this crate and stayed in the fight there, in the point, this could definitely have been a huge comeback for Brew. 
I'm yeah, I, a I, disappointed that it didn't. I was really kind of yeah. hoping to see something like that, you know, uh, even though. <laughs> Even though I was talking just before about how this game was pretty much over, I would have been uh, I would have been very happy to see that go in the other favor just for the excitement factor. Uh, yeah, I, I completely agree. The crate coming out would have been definitely the the, the biggest uh, pivotal point there. Uh, I don't really know what he was thinking with not dropping it. Maybe he was just uh, too wrapped up and didn't uh, you know think about it. But that definitely would have helped a bit. I don't know if it would have made it long enough for him to hold it. But you know, definitely the fact that he didn't do it was. Not good. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, that would have been the difference. Just that simple thing of him getting onto the point, dropping the crate. I mean, he got feared off the point. Had a way didn't had an excellent fear chain onto him with his staff five and his uh, death shot three. You know, getting those onto him and getting him off the point. But he had his sun break up. He could have gotten. Out of some of the other CCs that were thrown down onto him, dropped the crate, or at least died on the point, you know, ensuring that his team got there in time. I mean, I did see Valiant, Valiant got caught up with Hephius off the point on his way to the mine. I think that was that's a little bit, you know, it's not necessarily avoidable for the most part, especially with him running Panic Strike. If he was able to get him down below 50% health, that was not going to allow him to get there. But, you know, overall... Great comeback from the blue team. Excellent from the red team. I think if they didn't have such a strong opening, that Muffin Stuffers would have taken that game. So we're going to have to see if they're able to keep up the pressure at the start of the game and if the Inbreds can take it to the finals here and win this game. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to see blue team kind of take this into game three. And uh, I believe this is the first time we've ever seen this team, if I'm, if I'm correct. Yes, it is. Uh, I believe appease this is his first time in a in a tournament and uh interesting to see them going against a team uh like the inbred and almost coming <laughs> back with it at the end there that was I mean like I'm still wrapped up in that that was amazing yeah definitely so I mean the winner of this series will be taking on the indestructible teddy bears who actually won last week's match with Hathaway on their team he was on their team last week, uh, not on their team this week. So we're gonna. It'll be interesting to see if they, if the Inbreds take this one, take it to the finals, and go up against the team that he played with last week. That would make for some interesting chit chat, possibly. We'll have to see if, if they're able to counter him if they manage to make it to the finals. But the blue team definitely not going to be letting up. Hopefully, they're going to be giving it their all this match and trying to take it to the Battle of Kylo. I believe one of the members of team had to AFK for just a minute here so we're giving them a minute or two I do want to say after this series we will be doing our second giveaway which is another self hairstyle kit then we will be doing the finals and after the finals we will do the final giveaway of the night which will be a gem card or gem code rather 800 gems ten dollars worth of gems courtesy of arena net so definitely stick around for those if you are in it for the giveaways I believe we are going to be seeing a class swap from Katsumi here. Katsumi is going to be going onto his warrior, giving his team a little bit of a bunker. I believe that's actually his main class. So uh, Thief is his main class. Thief is his main class. Okay, okay, okay. But he's, his secondary class definitely is warrior. He has a lot of experience on warrior. Um, it's definitely not something he's just you know going on because his team needs him on a warrior. I mean, Valiant is an excellent thief as well, so they don't need two of them. So we're going to have to see if you know, it makes a difference in this upcoming game, or if the red team's able to deal with it. I mean, it's not completely different from, you know, what he was aiming to get at with the ranger, but obviously it's better. It applies more Condi clear for his team, which is exactly what they need, and they've got that banner. So it's going to be up to the red team to be able to interrupt the banners and make sure that, you know, they uh, keep the Condi pressure up, as the blue team didn't have a whole lot of Condi clear that last game. Yeah, something interesting that I would have liked to have seen is, is uh, right before Katsumi actually decided to make that swap, he was actually swapping his build first, and he swapped over to Longbow Greatsword, that, uh, that power build. It would have been kind of interesting to see that in the tournament today, uh, going up against the Inbreds. I can't help but giggle a little bit about that <laughs> name. <laughs> oh, man. I'm just checking the builds really quick to see if anybody happened to change anything when we weren't looking. Nothing much for the most part. I believe we've got, I mean, pretty standard builds for everybody for the most part. Just taking a look really quick if they changed anything up for either team. 
Oh, we do have basic. Basic did get rid of his elixir gun. He is, or excuse me, of his elixir S. He is going to be taking elixir gun. Elixir gun is going to allow for him to get give his team a lot of Condi pressure. Obviously, elixir gun three is going to, you know. That spray is going to give him a lot of Condi clear for him and his team. And he's got his extra, an extra Condi clear for himself. He's able to throw down his Elixir Gun 5 and throw the Throw Wrench through it to give an extra Condi clear for himself. So that's not a bad swap at all. But I can't remember the last time I've seen a triple kit NG in a game. So I'm interested to see if he's going to be able to use that to its full potential. And we do have Mikasa. He is going to be swapping to his warrior here. He's going to be running Shout Bow. Uh, nothing special whatsoever about his traits or anything for that matter. I mean, his traits are going to be 10463. Standard Shout Bow traits. Obviously, with the Soldier Runes and the Celestial Amulet. So we are just waiting for a couple members of the red team to ready up here, and we'll have the second game underway. A reminder the winner of this match will be going, or excuse me, the winner of the series will be moving on to the finals. 2,000 gems per first place winner and 800 gems per second place winner. Uh, we did have 12 teams sign up today, which is, you know, that's pretty good. 12 out of 12 spots that we have available. Three of those teams were free agent teams. Uh, obviously, anybody who is, you know, able to abide by the rules and is eligible to be a free agent gets put onto a free agent team and, you know, have some good matches. I believe last week we had a free agent team play second in the tournament out of 10 teams. So oh, that, was wow. pretty, that was pretty nice to see for the most part here. So, Did we have any uh, free agent teams make it out of pools today? Uh, we didn't see any free agent teams, but there were three agent, three free agent teams. Uh, I believe two of them lost in the first round, and one of them beat Resist Gaming and lost to Muffin Stuffers, who we are looking at right now on the blue team. Oh, uh, yep. Yeah, I see that now. Yeah, the other round. Um, you know, it's a little bit of a toss-up. But, you know, it's organized play. You don't join. You're not getting random people. I mean, random people for the most part, but you're in team speak. You're having a good time. Uh, if you join as a free agent, you expect to have some fun, meet some people, but with the expectation to win the entire tournament. There are some good teams here, uh, regardless of it being low to mid-tier. There are some good teams, good players, and it's really interesting to see how they do and